Greetings, nail people. Hello, Andrea, first one in again. Good job. Good job. Of course you're here. Of course you're here. Hello. Hello. Come on in, everybody. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Hola. Hi, everybody. Today we have Eeyore. I'm rocking the Eeyore. Yes, please invite your followers, share on Twitter, all that kind of good stuff. Tap your screen to give hearts. Always love hearts. And get ready to do a little bit of typing because this is going to be a conversation, not one of our, oh, bother, right? Not one of our uh, typical, I'm just kind of yammering on um, kind of conversation. I actually want to hear from you guys about some about some stuff. Let's chat. So we'll let everybody get uh, everybody invited and joined and get your typing finger primed. Meanwhile, I'll take a drink of my incredibly hot coffee. Hello. Hello. I'm rocking my University of Washington Huskies gear today. So I've got my University of Nails sign up here. So um, I'm totally rocking the university thing today. All right, so what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about education. And we're going to talk about it in a couple different phases. Like, I want to talk about what you wish you would have learned in training or nail school now that you've been in the industry for a while. Um, what you didn't learn that you feel like should have been a part of your education. And then I want to talk about okay, uh, what kinds of things with that education would you like to get now? And what form you would like that education in? Are you, do you like it being independent classes? Do you like it being at shows, classes around shows? Do you like it to be online? Um, that kind of stuff. So the first thing I want to start out by talking about, though, is what do you what do you wish you would have learned in nail school or nail training that would have made it better for you to make money in the salon? So start typing. I'm going to drink my coffee. Uh, and listen to my dog be crazy. Ruby girl, come here. Come here. You guys, in the meantime, gel application, says Andrea. Come here, Ruby. Let's say hi to everybody. Come on. Let's say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. See, this is Ruby. Ruby, see? Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Hi. Ruby says hi. What questions to ask when looking for the right salon? Oh, that's an interesting um, one that I hadn't really thought that I would hear. Yeah, Ruby's just going to hang out with us for a second while you guys are typing. Hi. Yes. Okay. So, Ruby says hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Acrylic processes and speed. Okay, so what do you guys feel like um, business management? Okay, says Jerry. Um, yeah, I hear that a lot um, that people don't. So when you left training or school and you were sitting down with your first clients, what was the first thing that you thought of was, let's say, advertisement, gel nails. What was the first thing you thought of, of, oh, ish, I can't believe I have no idea how to do that. Or I'm not confident in how to do that at all. Um, Kate says, independent contractor versus employee, pros and cons, and what is legal. Yeah, and that really does kind of need to be the responsibility of the schools because, the standards are so different everywhere that the school really kind of needs to be the one that says in this area, these are the laws. Um, all right, time management. Interesting. Tell me more what you think about that. Because I think time management and I think speed and not having a bunch of open holes in your book. But maybe that's just what I think. Maybe time management means something else. So, um that's uh, so expound on that a little bit more for me. And hello, Teresa. 
I just saw you come in. Yes. So yes, all of those things. Speed of service as well as how to get it booked consistently. And I guess I was really lucky because when I went to nail school, and that's why I have to ask all these questions of you guys, because I got an amazing education in nail school. I had a dedicated nail tech instructor. Um... Andrea says she was very well educated in almost everything except gel, right? Um, I had a dedicated nail instructor. We did get business education and all that. And um, so I have a hard time. That's why I keep asking you guys. Um, I know I need to practice, but it would have been awesome to have already had that in school. Um, and making your time worth making your money. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, and Andrea says that she also had a great teacher. So, um yeah, so I'm, and I also was a Tammy Taylor tech. In fact, they I used Tammy Taylor when I was in school because I knew that's what I was going to use in the salon, and so I learned all the Tammy Taylor time techniques. Uh, proper pricing structure, says Jerry. Colleen says, my school wasn't good, but I know others had a good experience. Um, Kate, how to price your services. I think that falls under kind of the business management category. Um, okay. So not having learned these things in school, um, and Colleen says, yes, when I graduated, I took a Tammy Taylor class. Right. Um, it's built into the Tammy Taylor six and eight hour class curriculum to teach you how to do that. But it does only focus on their timing with acrylics. You know, um, there's some different set of timing issues. I know that when I went and did my advanced training for the spa I worked in, there was all kinds of timing things that I learned that um, changed things quite a bit. So, um, Andrew says, at the time I took my schooling, they offered business manager license in Ohio as well. Yeah, I've actually, Ohio's got some interesting regulations. I've been kind of looking into them. They're kind of crazy. Hello, Camille. Um... Okay, so we have all these things that we wish we would have learned in nail school. Colleen says she still struggles with time, but it's getting better. I think that everybody kind of feels that way. Um, so how do you, since you didn't learn these things in school and you obviously need to know them to be successful, how much do you think do you feel like there's adequate education out there? Uh, like not cutting cuticles, one in Ohio, right? Um, do you feel like the education is out there and available for what you didn't learn? Or do you feel like there is more education that's needed? Or do you think that we just need to get everybody to use the education we have, I guess. Yes, yes, you feel like the education is definitely out there. Okay. What does everybody else think? Um, because I feel, I feel like there's lots of education out there, but um, Colleen says, if you search it out, yes, but now I've got to pay for what I should have learned in school. Well, yeah, I mean, of course, that's a completely different topic, right? And Camille says, I would say the education is out there. We are pretty fortunate here in the Pacific Northwest. We are incredibly fortunate here in the Pacific Northwest. We have um, a couple of good networking events here in the Northwest. Um, our law is pretty good. Our lawmakers are pretty involved. Um, so yeah, we are pretty, and we have great, it's a great market. Our, our clients are pretty savvy and pretty well educated. So um, is that, is that you, Sharon? Um, the not always available in your area. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that we have to. So, okay. So do you guys like education? Um, let's see. Okay. Kate says there is very little here. So you have to be motivated to seek it out and sometimes travel for it. I think that's kind of everywhere though. It seems like everybody has to kind of factor in some traveling. So do you, uh, Colleen says, love the shows that are larger and have more nail companies than hair, right? So like the nail networking events are really big. 
Um, Jerry says, I travel mostly for education. Andrea says, here, it's four hours to travel where I am at. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm getting ready to travel two and a half hours drive to um, the Oregon show, which speaking of, tomorrow is your last day for the Oregon One um, Nail Expo to get your early bird pricing on your tickets. I just bought my ticket today. So um, the uh, second to, this is, you know, second to the last day to get it for the early bird price. So if you're planning on going to the Oregon Expo, make sure you get your tickets before and tomorrow. Um, Let's see. And here in Massachusetts is only 100 hours. You really just learn to pass the state board in one day of acrylic. You know what, though? To be honest with you, I don't know that, like here in Washington and in a lot of other states, Oregon's also 600 hours. So like that, there's a lot of states that are 600 hours because that's what you need to be to be able to be eligible for federal funding is 600 hours. So here people can apply for they can fill out their FAFSA and they can apply for student loans and stuff to go to school, which is great. That's awesome. Um, but, oh, and Camille says she's got hers, need to plan a meetup. Absolutely. I'll be totally broadcasting the day of the show. Um, also, and we still need to get you up here so I can do your nails, Camille. Um, so... But the thing is, is that I don't know, like Andrew says, she had to do 300 for manicures and 150 for business management in Ohio. Um, Colleen said, went to the Nashville show and nails education was so-so and CID had very little product to buy. Yeah, I mean, a lot of those shows are the smaller shows. I think of the big shows, it's pretty common that everybody agrees that um, Chicago and Orlando are the bigger, big shows for nails. Um, I know that everybody likes to go to Long Beach because it's in the middle of wintertime in Southern California, which is nice. Um, but I don't know, but even in like the states here where we have 600 hours, I don't know that you're learning much more in that 600 hours than you learn in 100 hours in Massachusetts. It's just costing a whole lot more money and taking you longer to do it. Oh, and Camille, oh, you're heading to Seattle twice soon. Cool, because you'll drive right through Tacoma on your way to Seattle. And so maybe we can figure something out one direction or the other. Um, if nothing else, I will be down there in for the show, of course, in May. Um, never been to the Orlando show. Yeah, I haven't been either. Uh, my kids' birthdays uh, are, two of my kids' birthdays are right on the opposite edges around the Orlando show. And so with kids at home, it's kind of tough to take off for a couple of days. Um, both parents taking off for a couple of days to go to Orlando and not be here for birthdays and stuff. And of course, it makes it way more expensive to take the kids and do a vacation part too. So, you know, one of these next years. Um, Colleen says next year might go the best little nail show in Texas, right? Yes, Disney is there, but that requires money for a vacation, which is not in the budget this year. Um... So, and Disneyland is still closer. Um, so, since you're not getting the education in school, and that's a whole nother thing that we need to worry about, and you're going to have to pay for education, how, what do you think is a fair price for you to pay for education and for what you want to be educated in. So if you wanna take a gel class, what do you think is a fair price to pay for that class and what kind of, what are you, how long do you think that class should be? Should it be an eight hour class, a four hour class, six hour class, and what do you think is fair price for that? Same thing for business education, same thing for acrylic. Like comment what it is how long you think it should be, and what you think a fair price to pay for that is, provided it's actually going to be good education. Like, that's an understood, that it's education that's actually going to be worth some money. So, hi, Dana Lynn. Um, because that's what I think a lot of people struggle with is people say, well, I can't afford to pay for education. And um, so Andrea says, at least four hours, small group, but you prefer one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, well, but most educators will educate one-on-one, -on -one, just most people aren't willing to pay the price for that. I mean, I'll educate one-on-one, -on -one, but it's $100 an hour because that's the same thing I charge for my consulting fees. Um, 
So that gets expensive. Um, Camille says $150, eight hours for a standard skill like almond shaping, 30-day manicure. Okay. Uh, Jerry must be hands-on at $150 to $200 for around seven hours. Okay. So for hands-on education for a day, you're interested in, you know, $150 to $175, $200. Colleen says $50 to $175, I think it's fair. I've paid $275 for a C&D class, and I think that's too pricey. Yeah, I think at $275, you need to be looking at a ratio of three techs to one educator or four text to one educator. I think that at the $275, $300 mark, that if you get many more than that with one educator, that you're not getting the hands-on for that. Um, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, so Jer Jerry says, at least some hands-on, four hours theory, three hands-on. Okay, so yeah, definitely having the theory play a part in that. Now, would you prefer for your classes to be one day or would you prefer for them to be two days where you're still where you're gonna get more education but you're gonna have an overnight expense to include in that you're gonna have a hotel for the night um, and stuff like that how do you feel about that because I know that the model of nail camp has been great because it includes lodging and food in its many days um, Colleen says, still not great at hard gel, learned more about theory, wanted more hands-on. Okay. Andrea says, definitely one day. Um, Anna says, I was going to Monterey for an organic nails class, two days for 50 bucks, but you weren't able to. Oh, two days for 50 bucks though. That's crazy. I wonder how many people they were planning on getting in the class. Cause you know, uh, Jerry says it depends on the curriculum. Cause I think the, like the barefoot certification is, at least I know when I did it, um, we had a long chunk of theory, and then we had a long chunk of hands-on. So um, Jerry says 189. Um, Anna says it's Mexico, way cheaper than here, and for me that's near. Oh yeah, Organic Nails is Mexico, that's right. Um, Camille says I think I paid 250 for Atward e-file, it's steep but worth it. Okay. Um, Oh, 189, the cost of the barefoot class. Yeah, I did mine in conjunction with the Northwest Nail Tech Retreat, and so mine was priced a little different. So um, I am not, you know, I don't know what it is now. Yeah, I was lucky. I did mine right at the very beginning, and so I think mine was like 99 bucks for my certification, and it was like a four-hour theory class and then like a four or six-hour hands-on class. Like it was, and our certification was actual certification. Like I had, you know, Athena and uh, Michelle and, you know, stuff were actively like inspecting our work. Um, it was three hours theory. It, now it's three hours theory and three hours hands-on. Yeah, ours was definitely longer than that. But that was, again, back at the beginning. And it was, for us, it was in conjunction with the Northwest Nail Tech Retreat. So that had to fit in, you know, the time slots for the retreat. Camille says, I think it's 180 at the uh, one nail expo. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know it's changed over the years. I did mine, like, in 2014, I think. Um... Andrea says, I have two salon centrics near me. All classes are hair, hair, and more hair, right? Colleen says, I love mostly hands-on six-hour class with about five people. See, and that's, the, so the hard time I'm having with this, you guys, and maybe you guys can help lend some thought to this, because I talk to a lot of educators, a lot of manufacturer educators, a lot of independent educators, and the question that we have is, like, I was putting a class at my salon when I had my classroom, for $100 a person for a full eight hour days and it was capped at four people. So I was only gonna make $400 for all of the promoting work, all of the everything that went on to it and for what for me would be a 10 hour day because it's not just eight hours for the class, it's actually the time to set up and the time to take down and everything. So. Um, I make way more than 40 bucks an hour in the salon. So that's actually, you know, and I put that out there and I didn't sell any tickets, none, not one. And I had like four months advance notice for it. So what's, 
it's not when you're having to pay to rent event space and everything, it's not, and then travel expenses. So like if I was to teach a class at the expo, I have to be a vendor to teach at the expo. And so there's money to be a vendor plus travel expenses, plus the classroom space to be able to have the actual class. So you can't get a hundred or $150 um, for five or six or 10 people at a networking event without the person teaching the class losing money. You see? And so when you see the dollars and cents of it, that's what I'm trying to figure out is, I'm trying to figure out how the classes can be made available for the price that techs think is fair to pay, but yet all the expenses get covered and the educator still makes some money. Um, you know, how to do that. And they've said that you can't make a living as an independent nail educator um, in the United States um, without being product or brand affiliated. And I I refuse to believe that's true, but we got to figure it out. Camille says, there are a lot of worthwhile classes that I want, but won't be taking due to yearly budget. Right. And of course, the, the educators have to have a budget on what they have to charge to make a class work, just like we as nail techs have a budget on what we have to charge to be able to make a living doing nails. And so nail techs also have to have a budget for education as well, right? And so... Um, you know, we got to find somewhere that's in the happy medium part, you know? Um, so like I spend $6.95 a month for my face to face with Doug Shoon. Um, that's my education expense that I have ongoing every month. Um, I obviously don't have to pay $10 a month for University of Nails. Um, but that $120 a year that I'm asking people to pay to subscribe to the University of Nails is the that same $120 I spend on other things. I spend on other education so that I can provide education for the University of Nails. Um, so what do you think guys think is appropriate to have as an education budget for the year? Um, do you think that if you had an education budget of $500, you could get done what you needed. Do you think that you would need to have an education budget of a thousand dollars to be able to get what education you need every year? Like, what do you think is um, appropriate for somebody to put in their budget? Um, what do you think you could get a return on your investment? I guess is what I'm saying. Do you think if you were spending fifty dollars a month on education? or $100 a month on education, would that, you know, be? Um, Camille says, I would answer a survey that asked what education I planned to take that year. Yeah, I mean, I, because I would like to put all this together in a survey, because I have a marketing degree, so I was trained to do that. Um, so, but I need to know what kind of questions to ask. Um, Camille says that you budget $2,000 a year. I think for someone who is planning on making a living doing nails, being a professional, I think that $2,000 for the year is probably a pretty, that's a pretty fair budget. Um, Teresa is $2,500 a year. Yeah, I mean, I think that when you're first starting out, I know it's hard to even scrape together $500 a year. Um, but I think that even at $500 a year, you can go to a networking event that's within reasonable driving distance from where you are and pay for a cheap hotel. Um, yes, of course, including travel and hotel, um, says Camille. Um, you can probably fit a class in there at the networking event for a $500 budget and you can afford to do some online education. Oh yeah, you totally have to buddy up in the room. It's like, yeah, you got to pack as many people as you can fit into a room. So how do you guys feel and shopping while you're there? Now see that actually should be a little bit different budget, Camille. And I actually did a show on that one time uh, about how to best work an expo. 
um, and a show so that you don't break the bank, but you also put things into the appropriate things. Now, see, I don't think that $2,000 is enough if you factor in all of the shopping you're doing. I think that should only factor in shopping you do in your research and development budget. I don't think that should factor in um, salon supply expense shopping because the salon supply expense you would be spending anyway. So I think that your budget should only include, um, like I said, research and development is what I call it because it's research and development for what I'm going to do for adding services in my salon maybe or maybe not. Um, products I want to check out, which the great time to do that is at an expo because you don't have to pay shipping. You can just pick up a couple of things here and there to try. But I don't think supplies should count in that because you would buy supplies anyway. Um, and usually at a show, you can get more bang for your buck and you don't have to pay for shipping. So, um, and let me tell you what, I know that if I place a couple of pretty decent sized orders in a month, my shipping cost equates out to what I would spend for a hotel room for a night. So, yeah, research and development. Maybe I'll do a University of Nails. Maybe I'll do a free video and put it up on the University of Nails YouTube um, for that. Because I think that that's a big thing. So how do you guys feel about online classes? How do you guys feel about online education? When do you think it's good? When do you think it's not good? How much do you think is fair price to pay for an online education class or a webinar or a video service like Doug and I have like what do you think how do you feel about those and what do you do you like them do you not do you wish there was more do you like that there's no travel expense Colleen says um because I've tried several products but not necessarily going to be a service right that's the best part about the research and development budget um and sometimes I use those, I end up using those things um, and they become part of the supplies, but um, sometimes they don't. So um, Kate says, I prefer hands-on versus online. You learn better that way. Right, I think some of that has to do with um, the three learning styles. There's people who learn visually, there's people who learn auditorily by hearing, and there's people who learn by doing kinesthetic. Um, Camille says, I'm good with online classes, but mostly for nail art or business info. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, right, like I'm a kinesthetic learner, and I think that a lot of us as nail people are kinesthetic learners. That's part of that touch thing that we do. Um, so like when I was at my university, I did better in my in-person classes than I did my online classes because the very act of going to the campus and sitting down in the classroom got me ready for, it's a learner, um, a what learner? It's kinesthetic is what it means. It's um, touching. Um, you learn by touch and doing. Um, it comes from the root word of kinesiology, um, kinesthetic. Um, so some people are visual, some people are audio and some people are kinesthetic learners. So for the people who are visual learners, they can learn, um, online really well because they're watching videos, they're watching information, they're reading things. Um, people who are auditory learners learn better by hearing. So they do well with lecture, um, listening to the education um and taking you know notes so it goes through their hearing and down to note taking um they do better studying for test by reciting and repetition um hearing it um andrew says i need someone to hammer gel application in my hands and my brain right and then there's kinesthetic learners who um the atmosphere the hands-on the touching the having someone physically in the room with you to grab a hold of your hand and go no it feels like this um are that's a different type of learning as well so yeah so when i was in the university i did better in those classes because 
all of the things of going to the class and being in the class was actually priming my brain for the learning. So I could read something at home or I could read it in class and I would actually learn it better in class than I would reading it at home even though I was reading the exact same thing in the exact same way. I was better working on campus. Um, so I am personally am better with hands-on classes because I'm a kinesthetic learner and I understand that about myself. Um, I'm secondarily a video, a visual learner. So I can learn quite a bit by seeing it, but only if I already have a base of knowledge. If I have a base of knowledge, then just seeing it will sometimes trigger the aha moments that are good enough for me to then go back and hands-on work it out myself. Um, if you just tell me, like auditory learning, if you just tell me it's in one ear and out the other. Seriously, like can't even, nothing. So online classes are good, I guess we would say, for business things or for visual learners. Um, maybe some nail stuff, but for the kinesthetic learners, we need to have um, in-person stuff. Okay, so if we agree that it's expensive to go be a, teach a class at the networking events, do you think it's worth it for you to pay that extra price to have the convenience of having at the networking event? Or would you prefer to have the class? Would you prefer to have the class be less expensive, but on its own free standing? And then if that's the case, where do you look? How can somebody promote one of those classes? So say I decided I was going to put on a class in Salem, Oregon in July. So I was gonna put on a class in Salem, Oregon in July. Say I was gonna put on a eight hour whatever class, um, salon basics, how to do nails in a salon. I'm just totally like throwing, shooting from the hip here. Um, Andrea, for the University of Nails, you're planning to do chemical compositions and classes like gel for people that are not so interested in the business stuff. Yes, I'm actually filming them right now. So they will be up in the next month or so. Um, I'm going to basically teach classes that I think should have been taught in nail school and um, were not. And so that it's an affordable way for people to close the gap between what they didn't get in nail school and the two or $300 advanced classes. I think that up until a certain point, you're wasting your money going to a two or $300 class because you're not gonna get enough out of it because your skill level baseline isn't good enough. Um, so yeah, the University of Nails was always intended to start out being just business education, but was um, going to always planning on doing some technique, non-product specific. Um, Camille asked, who's my ideal University of Nails student? My ideal University of Nails student is somebody who understands that the $10 a month is an ongoing thing because learning is an ongoing process. So somebody who is investing the $10 a month and they're planning on that that $10 a month, they're going to spend it for like 10 months, a year, 18 months, that they're going, it's $10 a month, but they're going to spend that money long term because I want them to, um, to actually watch the videos multiple times. So watching a video and taking the notes that you're supposed to take on the video and starting to do your homework that I talk about in the videos and then come back and revisit the videos again um, and to treat it like I treat Doug's face to face with Doug Shoon as my nail question library. So if I have a question about something that has to do with nails, the science of it, or something like that, the very first thing I do is log into my Face to Face with Doug Shoon and I search and I watch the videos he did on those different things so that then if I still don't get the answer to my question, now I have an intelligent question, a well thought out question to ask. I have an advanced question to ask, um, not the basic stuff that's covered. 
So my ideal University of Nails student would know that their University of Nails membership is treating it like a library of things they need to go back and look at several times. Um, Colleen says Facebook target marketing, maybe look up salons in the local area and mail out letters and postcards. Well, that's true. Um, I'm trying to think of cost effective because that's the thing. If we want to keep the price of classes down, then since advertising the class is an expense of putting on the class, then we have to also keep advertising cheap. So, um, Facebook target marketing, that would be, um, how, I mean, would you feel that somebody was kind of stalkerish if, like, say I wanted to teach that class in Salem, in whatever, if I made up flyers and mailed them to the salons in the area, but not everybody gets mail at the salons and not everybody reads it, um, if I was to message the salon on Facebook or call the salon. I mean, we all get irritated all the time, right? About getting added to groups for multi-level marketing and uh, all that kind of stuff. Would that be irritating if somebody was doing that for nail classes? Like, how do we feel about that? How do you feel about somebody messaging you out of the blue saying, hey, you know, because I post like in the Oregon nail text group, um, which is amazing that Tiffany Cordoza does that and lets us post other things in there. Um, because um, if it spoke to me, I wouldn't mind. Um, right, but boy, that's super, that's super risky. Like, how do I run the risk of not being that annoying chick who keeps calling and talking about her classes that are coming up in your area? Because I don't want to be that chick. And I don't want to waste the time being that chick. And you have to watch out for nail boards. Um, I want classes, so I'd be okay with it as long as it didn't keep calling, right? Um, maybe an email list? Maybe getting people to subscribe to an email list for education in the areas that I'd be going to teach a class to or we're going to teach a class to would help. Um, but it's directly related to what the business does, not just a vague sales pitch, right? Yeah, that's true. Um trying to think of different ways to reach out to people that wouldn't be super annoying and invasive. Um, so I don't know, lots to think about. Um, so my battery's going to die here soon. And, um, I don't know if nail talk radio is on tonight. Um, so if it is, it's getting to be time for that too. Um, Camille says, I like to know what people in my industry are up to, right? Oh, that's the other thing I was going to say. You guys have to understand that a lot of nail groups that are big, that have a wide reach. Like, so for example, there's a gazillion and one people on um, Northwest Nail Techs, okay? Northwest Nail Techs is Jessica and Ellen's group to promote the Northwest Nail Tech Retreat, which is awesome, Right? And there is a lot of different postings that go on in that group, but for reasons that are understandable, they've to put all that work into all of that. They're not interested in me advertising University of Nails on Northwest Nail Techs because I am not a vendor at the Northwest Nail Tech Retreat and I didn't contribute anything to help build up the numbers that are in that group. Um, and all of the posts in Northwest Nail Tech um, requires a, um, and I do have a group. I have a Washington State group, and I have the nail group, and I have all of that. Um, but they don't seem to get as much action as some of these other bigger groups. So there's no one group that's everybody. So you go through and you plaster, like, when I'm doing something big, I can go through and post in, I'm a member of like, I don't know, like a hundred groups. I can go in and post in like 70 groups, right? And I may only reach 150 people. Um, it, a lot of times with uh, like Nails Over Coffee, I'll, I'll go ahead and post it, the video to the Nails Over Coffee and then I will take that post and I will boost the post. So I'll spend $5 to boost it. 
and then I'll share it in like 20 groups. And then that tells me how much paid reach I'm getting and how much organic reach I'm getting and everything. And I may reach 1,800 or 2,000 people. Okay, there's 330,000 licensed nail techs in the United States alone. If I'm boosting a post and I'm blasting Facebook groups with it and I'm still only reaching 1,800 or 2,000 people, how do we reach bigger? How do we reach more? You know, I post in Beauty Connect, which has 20,000 members. How am I, and with 18 groups, whatever, how am I only getting 1,800 um, views? So I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but we're working on it. And that's what we need to do. That's really the big thing is that we need to do is we need to figure out how to get the schools to educate better. We need to figure out how to get techs to be able to spend the money on education, you know, and it's hard because the people who are engaged in the groups, the people who are watching the show and engage with me today um, and those kind of things, those are the people who are spending money. Um, and the people who are trying to do it, but there's so many people who aren't and we can't reach them. Um, Colleen says, I think lots of people in the groups just like the nail art pictures, right? And that's a whole nother issue is, you know, nail art classes are fun and they're great, but that's like eating dessert before the steak and peas. Like, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta eat the main part of your dinner before you can have the good fun stuff. And if you don't know how to build a structurally good nail or how to make your gel polish not peel or whatever, then it doesn't matter how awesome and exciting art you put on it. You're not gonna be able to keep clients because nobody's gonna pay $50 for a manicure that lasts two days, no matter how good the art was for that two days. So we gotta get people to stop just going to nail art classes. Um, and start doing other classes as well. So, I don't know, lots of stuff to think about. So I hope that some of these people um, maybe reach out to schools and text before they get licensed. There is that. I mean, I suppose that maybe um, promoting like U of Nails or something like that um, and some of these other classes to the schools. It's so hard, though, because when you're in school, I mean, I don't know, but when... I mean, I wasn't because I knew what product I was going to use, but um, Facebook has confusing algorithms. I never understand why people who subscribe to my posts don't see. Yeah, Kate, it's, you know, they try to get money. And so I give them money and I still don't get the exposure that I want. So that's really irritating. Um, um, Teresa, I cruise the nail groups to find out about education going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, we try. But then it gets buried too, you know? Um, so again, I don't know what the answer is, but we have to, we gotta figure out something, right? Um, because there's lots of people who will gladly teach um, lots of things, but you know, um, like I've been doing nails for 20 years and I love doing nails and I do nails in the salon and that's awesome. But I would really prefer to work like two days a week in the salon and um, make the primary, the primary part of my income be education. I would way rather do that at this stage of the game. But, you know, how do you make that happen? And, you know, you got to be able to do it and make money doing it. So I don't know. Definitely lots of food for thought here. Hopefully a lot of the manufacturers, educators, and the manufacturers will watch this video and get some kind of idea on what we're talking about and understanding that, again, we're that the people who are active and engaged and everything, we are a different market than I think the bulk of nail techs. I think we've got nail techs that even if the education's free, they're not even gonna sit down and watch free YouTube videos. And again, those are kind of like the discount salon clients that are never gonna, they're never gonna make an appointment, they're never gonna keep their nails on, they're never gonna pay more than $10 to have their nails done or they'll do their nails at home. And that those people are never gonna pay for education no matter what. Teresa says, I don't know if my post went through, but I cruised the group to find out about education. Yes, it did, I saw it. Um, and read it actually, and now twice. Um, and, but I think, and then there's the people like us. Yes, there is a lot of drama, isn't there in the groups, Teresa? Um, 
And then there's the people that have $2,000, $2,500, whatever their budget's built in for every year to for education and everything. And they have a hard time getting the education they're looking for. But then I think that like the 80% of people in the middle is the people that we've got to figure out how to reach. So if there's 330,000 nail techs in the United States and 10%, or which is, I think, generous. I think it's generous to say that there's 33,000 nail techs in the United States who are actively have education budgets and are looking to spend that kind of money. I would venture to say it's probably closer to 5%, if that, 3 to 5%. Um, and then there's the bottom 10% that no matter what you do, they're never going to get any education. They just don't give a rip. Um, but then there's that 80% in the middle, right? I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people who how we're not reaching them how do we reach them and how do we find out what classes they want and how much they're willing to pay and what their budget is you know it's so hard um Camille says I feel like we can help by elevating the industry it will take time it will take time and it's it's happening. It's happening, you guys. There's um, a discount salon that I like to go to. Um, they're a higher-end discount salon. Um, and they've already owned for years and closed down a salon that they couldn't sustain it because the prices were too low. And with rent and costs and employees and everything, they couldn't sustain it. And they couldn't raise their prices in the location that they were in. So they closed and they reopened another location where now they use name brand products. They do higher end services. They pay a living wage. They, you know, I mean, they're still a discount salon. They're not, you know, their most expensive pedicure is $40. They start out their pedicures. They have a happy hour pedicure special in the morning for $18. Most of the time their pedicures, their average pedicure is $23 to $25. Um, and they're using uh, the really fancy spa chairs that have the liners, the, the baggy liners and the jets and the chairs massaged and heat and all that kind of stuff. And they're using name branded product and they're following sanitation and safety. And you know what I mean? The massage sucks, um, but the callus removal and polish is good and everything's clean. It's all in disinfectant or de disposable. They, they open a brand new buffer file toe separators, pumice thing they open a brand new kit for every person um and that's factored in their business model now and they moved into a part of town where and a space that can sustain that business model and so i think that's changing you know we're seeing discount salons close now they're coming to the ends of their five and ten year leases and their landlords are rents are higher now and all of that and products are more expensive and they're starting to have to close um, because that business model isn't sustainable and so I I mean it is if it's done right but very seldom is it done right and so we're starting to see the right sizing now we're starting to see the the filtering of the high-end spas the high-end independents the mid-range salon is starting to slowly make a comeback um, and the discount salons will be fewer and further between so um Teresa says there need to be a price level for everyone that's why we have text for nails from 10 to 200 right Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I charge $75 for a full set of nails and I don't make any bones about it. That's the price. And at $75, I'm done running specials now. You know? So, um, well, I appreciate everybody's um, conversation and candor for this episode. Hopefully, um, I will share it and I will share it with some of my manufacturer friends and maybe we can get a little insight on this. And I'm going to take some notes on, I'm going to replay it for myself, which I hate to do, you guys. I hate watching myself. But I'm going to take some notes and see if I can put together a survey that um, we can share with everybody. I've dabbled in it, but never really sat down and tried to actually figure it out. So um, I will put that together and see if maybe we can get a survey that we can get shared. If we can get a survey to go like viral, then we can get a better idea. I'm gonna need at least a thousand people to answer the survey for what comes out of it to be meaningful. 
and the more the better. If I can get 3,000 people, that would be 1%. Yeah, I'm gonna use SurveyMonkey, I'm a member. Um, I pay for SurveyMonkey, like all good marketing people should. Um, and so I'd like to get at, at 3,000 responses, we're at 1% in the United States. So the more the better, because then I can actually make those results be meaningful. Um, Teresa says, I plan on retiring in five years and will go for as much education as I can until then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I will never retire. I will retire from doing nails in a salon every day to being an educator and a writer. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write some books this summer. You guys, just wait. The University of Nails stuff, it's coming out in book form. Just got to give me like six months to get it done. All right. So I'm out of here. I will see you guys Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific, which is 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, and is one, I believe it's nine o'clock in the UK and 10 o'clock in Europe. And I can never remember what it is in New Zealand. It's like Tuesday at like 10 in the morning or something. The New Zealanders really get the nails over coffee. So bye. Thanks for joining in. I will try. How do you watch NTR? Um, go to Nail Talk Radio um, on Facebook and check that out. And I'm sure there's a link there to choose. Um, or you can go to nailtalkradio.com and there'll be information up there with whatever um, Athena and Elaine and Ellen and Braden and everybody have going on with the Nail Talk Radio crew. So just search it on Facebook or um, search it on their website, nailtalkradio.com. All right, I'm out of here, guys. See you on Monday, 1 p.m.